Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you today. It is National Knife Day. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a collection update because I don't know why we all collectively decided to do these on National Knife Day, but it seems to be the way of the YouTuber to do these. I've already done a couple in the last uh, week or so. I did the uh, all my spider codes and then I did all my USA made stuff. Uh, today I knew this was going to be the longest video, so I saved it for today. This is all my foreign made stuff, uh, mostly Chinese or Taiwanese, uh, but a, a few from some other countries too. So uh, this is... Um, going to be a lengthy video just to, to get through that. I'm going to split them up a little bit. I, the spider codes are not going to be here because I did that video. I don't want to repeat stuff. So uh, all my Chinese made and Taiwanese made spider codes are in that video. So go back and watch that. I'll link to it down below. I also did one for all my USA made stuff. If that's more your, more your jam, you can find that link down below and go look at that before anybody starts complaining about Chinese stuff. Just go watch the other ones. You don't have to watch it. All right. Uh, I split stuff up in uh, three different spider packs. I do a, um, uh, I have a big one with all like my main stuff in it, and then I have uh, one with budget stuff and one with kind of unique onesie twosies. Um, and I'm going to start off with those uh, out of that particular spider pack, out of my small one. These are two knives, the first two here. You guys know, you guys love, I know, because you always want to see them when I do live videos. So let's get that out of the way. Uh, we have the Chavez Ultramar 229, American company, but made by Ria over in China. Fantastic knife. I love this thing. Got it at Blade Show. It was 375 And they are starting to, to hit places now. I know that they they uh, gave some to people on their Facebook group. Or not gave. Sold some to some people on the Facebook group. And I, I believe they are going to be hitting regular retailers uh, pretty soon. Hand rub blade. I love this thing. Don't need to spend too much time on it. You guys know it. You guys love it. Skull clip got to do that. All right, there we go. Uh, just a fantastic knife. W one of my favorite knives that I own, absolutely, without a doubt. Next up, made in North America, but not America. And again, another one you guys always demand to see, North Arm Skaha 2s, is the carbon fiber one. Waited a year to get one of these, um, wound up getting it from Daddy OEDC. Uh, and ironically, the exact same day that my number came up and I was allowed to order another one if I wanted to from North Arm, and I didn't, like an idiot. I should have, but uh, I really do love this knife. It's pretty great. Made in British Columbia, which is in uh, the country of Canada, if you're not uh, you're sure, but I know it's Canada. I'm trying to make a bad joke. Uh, I just really like this. It's so light. It looks great. It's awesome to handle. Just a fantastic knife. Um, but you guys all know that that's why there is a waiting list of, uh, I don't even think there is one right now. I think they shut the waiting list down. It got to be like a year and a half and I think they shut it down. Um, now we're going to go to the, uh, the main pack here and I'm going to have, this is going to be just as much a surprise uh, to you as it is to me as we go down through here. Cause some of them, I, I don't remember, um, where they were made. So we're just going to look down through, um, well, first up the. Kershaw Atmos, uh, again, an American company made in China. Uh, just a great little budget Kershaw. I think my favorite overseas made, you know, budget Kershaw. I really like it. No assist. Action on it is fantastic. Had this one for quite a while. Um, and I have no intentions of ever getting rid of it. Looks cool. Nice deep carry clip. Uh, great for gentlemen sort of carry. It's 8CR. You're going to see a lot of that uh, as we go through these. But uh, still pretty darn cool. I just I just really love the look of it. Sinkovich design. Um, the kind of, it's not faux carbon, it's real carbon, but it's, it's a laminate. It's over top of the G10, but, uh, I think these are like 25 bucks, 35 bucks, something like that. They're not horribly expensive and they're just really awesome. Hollow ground blade. I, I highly recommend you pick one of these up that if you're a knife collector at all, it's just a great knife to have around is a kind of fancy beater, I guess is the best way to describe how I use it. Uh, next up a couple cold steels. A lot of people just assume cold steels all American made. No, almost none of them are. Um, they are Taiwanese. So, uh, the American law, man, you knew you were going to see it at some point. This is one I'll never get rid of. It's the mascot of the channel. Uh, this is an old XHP one. Another reason why I won't get rid of it. They've gone to S35VN, which I really like S35VN, but it's kind of cool to have the older XHP ones. Uh, just ergos are great. It's just, it's a great knife and it has its own song. So, got to keep it. These are somewhere around the $100 range. Um, really, really nice knife, though. This ain't going anywhere. Uh, next up, 
we have, this is not cooperating going back in its hole. There we go. Another Cold Steel, the Code 4. Uh, probably one of my all-time favorite EDCs. Actually, I know it is because I put it in a video. Uh, this is an S35 VN1. It's one of the newer ones. Um, it's uh, just, this is the spear point version. It comes in a Tanto and some other stuff, but God, it's just, it's so thin, so light. It's thin, but it's still super comfortable. Uh, very hardcore with the triad lock and stuff. It's it's just a great user knife, absolutely for sure. I I love this thing. The Code 4 is maybe the best thing they've ever made, in my opinion, at Cold Steel. It's just it's just an amazing knife. Go go get you one. And they're well under 100 bucks. I think they're like 80 or something like that. And I think sometimes even on other like places you can find them really, really cheap. Um, next up, we're going to do the Civivis. Um, I have. I have one on the way that's going to be arriving on uh, Monday. I'm recording this on a Friday. So uh, sorry I couldn't wait for that. But I don't know if it's going to be a keeper yet or not. So it may not have been really good to put in here anyway. Um, first up would be the McKenna Damascus. I love this thing. Um, I've always loved the McKenna, and I just like the look of the Damascus. My daughter's name is McKenna. It's not spelled the same, but still. Uh, Elijah Isham design. Such a great little front flipper. Uh, so good, in fact, that it's actually kicked all the other front flippers out of my collection. This is the only one that I have right now and that I can think of. Maybe we'll correct that if I realize I'm wrong later on, but I, I think it's the only one I've got right now. Um, just a, a really, really good knife. 85 bucks for Damascus and stuff. That That is awesome. And the Civivi quality is worth every bit of 85 bucks. It's expensive for a Civivi. Not expensive at all for a Damascus front flipper. I've been told that Damascus is primarily their 9CR, uh, their 9CR18 MOV steel, which is I think is a really decent steel. I, I like it. Um, so I have no complaints there, but a uh, really, really cool knife. Uh, next up, this is an also, also one of my, maybe my, I mean, I like the McKenna a lot for its flippability and it's, it's probably my favorite, but as far as like just usability and stuff, the Duras is amazing. Uh, I, I just really, really enjoy this knife. D2, it's just a, it's a bulky, small little knife. And, and I like knives like that a lot. Um, as you can see, it's a little beat up, but, uh, I really, really do love this thing. It's good. I guess it's not beat up. It's just got tape residue on it. But uh, um, I, this is, I just really like the look of it. I like this gray. Uh, this one really struck me. This was one that I knew immediately. I want that for me. Like, I wanted it to review as well. But I also just wanted it, you know, for me. Um, really, really cool design. Uh, next up, we have the Elementum. This is the the uh, rosewood handle one. Uh, it's not the fanciest wood in the world, but I don't think it's too bad, especially for the price. I think the in this version they're like uh, sixty something, and then you can get a G10 one for like fifty bucks. So uh, for D2 and nice ball bearings, great action. Again with that deep carry clip, I really like Savivi's deep carry clip. Just recently, I've heard some people complaining about it. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's completely fine. Um, but yeah. Great looking knife, nice hollow grind. Uh, just a great looking knife, D2 steel again. Another one that I, I gotta say, go, go buy one. I mean, obviously I have all these, so I'm gonna say go buy one to all of them. Uh, and next up we have probably my, still my favorite budget knife. It won my budget knife of 2019 and I, I still kind of stand by it. Uh, we have the Civivi Backlash. Good full size or you know mid size sort of knife, three and a half inch blade, uh, G10. Yeah, it doesn't, this one is the blue liner version, but there are other versions now. You can get one with that Damascus blade. I know I saw some with some ebony wood handles that I was slightly tempted by. Uh, but you know what? I have one of these, so I'm just going to stick with it. Um, really, really good knife. This, again, is the 9CR18 MOV. I've put a fair amount of use on this. It's held up extremely well. Um, just a really, really cool knife that kind of launched Civivi, I think. I think this was the first knife of theirs that people went, whoa. And just to see what we could do uh, with a budget knife. I like that you can choke up on it. There are just so many things to love about the Backlash. It, it's it's pretty darn fantastic. Uh, next up, we're going to switch over to Kaiser. I only have one actual Kaiser at the moment, uh, but I've 
got a couple more coming but again they're not going to be here in time so and i know at least one of those is going to be a keeper uh we have the mini sheepdog uh just a fun 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 knife great fifth pocket knife awesome action it's just kind of small and silly and i just i love the mini sheepdog this is one of the I can't say rare black ones. They just they just sell out the fastest. They're hard, the hardest to find, but I don't think I think they made just as many of these as every other color. But they just sell out super super quick. Um, I had a blue one, and I sold it and got the black one. So because uh, I just wanted the black. But again, great little fifth pocket knife. So much fun to fiddle with. And now they're 154 cm, which is a uh, really good budget steel. Uh, it's funny we're calling it a budget steel now. When I first started looking at knives, it was like a, a premium steel, but I didn't call it a quasi-budget steel because what are they, those are about, what, 70 something like that? I'm throwing out prices here off the top of my head, so don't judge me too harshly. And another great budget knife that I don't talk about anymore, but I probably should show in videos more because it is a really good comparison for what you can get for good money, uh, the Tangram Santa Fe. Uh, this kind of worn cliffy sort of blade. Uh, you have the uh, Akuto steel. It's and they're, they're like on Amazon. They're like uh, what, like thirty bucks or something like that. Um, it, and they come in like this amazingly cool packaging and stuff. Uh, excellent sized, uh, proportioned deep carry clip. Um, comfortable ergonomics. Um, it's not on bearings. It's just on washers, but it doesn't need to be on bearings. It, the action is good enough. I, I just, I, God, I love this thing. Such a good knife that I never talk about anymore. And honestly, I never use. And I, I should use it more because it's it's darn good. Uh, next, we're going to do some steel wheels. A couple of them are not here where I can reach them at the moment because I was poorly prepared. But um, we have, made in Italy, the Mini Antlock uh, Mini Tank, or what is it? Uh, the Tasso Mini. Gosh, I'll get it out there eventually. The Tasso Mini with the Antlock. Uh, I, I love the antlock. I think it's really cool. It's just cool to see something different. Uh, the full size one I thought was cool, but I like the smaller one better. I like the blue on it better. The other, the full size is orange, but that was a very small factor in it. Um, I just, I do live in an area where sometimes I have to carry a knife under three inches and I wanted a good, you know, user version of the Tasso, so I can carry this more, so that's kind of why I went with that. Um, and for some reason, I think this is this is later production, they came out with the minis later, I don't know, the, the action just seemed a little bit smoother, a little bit more free, as I almost erped there. Um, yeah, again, you can choke up, I always like to be able to, I always like a good forward finger choil, this has a good one. Love that blade shape, M390 steel, uh, these are like, what, 180, something like that, uh, yeah, I'm not in love with the pocket clip, but other than that, I, it's just a just a great knife, and it does rattle. That's kind of annoying, but other than that, awesome knife. Uh, next up, probably my favorite steel wheel uh, that they've made recently, especially in the budget sort of range, uh, would be uh, the Lanner. It, this is the mini again. You'll see the theme there. I do a lot of minis with the steel wheels. <laughs> um, D2 steel uh, again, just running on bushings, but great action. Um, a little bit harder to access the lock bar. That's about the only problem I have with this thing. And again, sticking with the theme, good forward finger trail. So um, yeah, and I and I like the this bright, bright red anodization they put on here. It's just it that's cool. I don't know how they do that. It almost makes a sound. The blue is even brighter. The blue is insane too. Um, really cool knife though. You can get a bunch of different colors and configurations, all that. I do have two other steel bowls that are not in here right now. My uh, I have a mini cut jack that resides in my Volkswagen, and uh, my buddy has my Modus. So I do have two of those, uh, but uh, uh, they're just not here right now. So sorry about that steel wheel. It was not intentional. Uh, forgot to get the one on the Volkswagen, and, and my buddy's got the other one. So uh, next up, we're going to do... Uh, these are some mass drop things. Um... Uh, most of their stuff is made overseas by Wii or Riot. This is the beloved Gent. Uh, this is not a stock configuration. If you go look right now, I think Gents are available on the drop site now. They're not called Mass Drop anymore. Sorry, I, I think I said Mass Drop a second ago. Drop. Um, they... This is not a stock configuration, though. Uh, I did a scale swap with uh, one of you lovely viewers uh, because if you want the fancier version, the select, 
with the rosewood scales or the carbon fiber, you have to get the stone wash blade. I wanted the satin and the wood. Um, so I passed on that and I mentioned it in a video and some guy offered to swap. So I sent him my G10 scales and he sent me these rosewood ones, which I, I very much appreciate. Uh, and, and I think it just looks classy as hell right now. I just really like this. This is one of my favorite knives just to carry when I have shows and things like that. And I don't want it to be obvious. Very, very tiny, indiscreet little clip. Like no one's going to know that's a knife in your pocket. That clip's getting a little scratched up. Um, but yeah, because I do carry this one a whole lot. Uh, just a, a really cool knife. The Gent is, they're like 80 bucks for the basic one. It's its really hard to go wrong with a Gent. Another knife from Drop that's really hard to go wrong with, and I think you will see a lot of us reviewers have these, and it's for a damn good reason. The Keen, designed by Ray Laconico. Oh, by the way, the Gent was Farm Forge, if I didn't mention that. Um, I apologize about that. But a uh, really, really nice uh, S35VN. They're like 120 bucks, something like that. Uh, this one is the one with the holes and the uh, the standard finish, obviously. You can get it without the holes and it's a few different colors. This one's getting pretty scratched up, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, I may send this off and get it re-anode um, or black washed or something, I don't know, uh, to, to kind of cover up the scratches and put a finish on it that doesn't scratch up as much. But other than that, wow, love the blade, love the action. The ergos are good. I, I like the way it looks. It's just, it's one of the best things they ever made. All their stuff they make is really good, but uh, this this one is just uh, pretty special. And I think a lot of people do agree that it just everything came together just right. Uh, this is again made by Wee, and just a uh, over in China. But just God, it's such a good, good action, good blade. What else do you want? You know, what else do you want, people? Apparently my cat wants something, according to that sound, if you could hear it in the, in the background. Uh, next up, a final drop knife. This is the newest edition. This is a prototype, but I, th I think they may still be available for pre-order. I can't remember. I might be wrong about that. But this is the uh, Terzula um, ACTF something. I'm going to get this all wrong. Uh, uh, Advanced Combat Tactical Folder. So, yeah. All right. There we go. The Tanto one. Uh, this is the new one. Uh, this is a prototype, but uh, like I said, they will be available soon. Um, I think in January, if uh, if you didn't get in on the pre-order, if it's not still open. Um, again, uh, made by Wii. Uh, little thumb stud or a little flipper. Uh, thumb disc, sorry. Uh, I, I, I really like this thing. I was really surprised how much I was I liked it. Um, great place for your thumb to land there. Just well designed by Bob Trizula and the my favorite pocket clip of any knife that I have because this is a milled pocket clip but they also made it more tensiony like a spring pocket clip I just god I, I just really like it I just that pocket clip just I know it's stupid but we're all nerds here if you're if you're 18 minutes in you're already a nerd anyway and just this pocket clip is, is just fantastic and again they're not horribly priced they're well under 200 for uh this g10 version which I think I would recommend over the more expensive ones honestly really really cool knife all right, um, now we're going to move on to, uh, we're, I think we're going to be in more budgety sort of categories now. Um, I got to switch packs. These videos are much harder to do logistically than, than you would think they would be with moving everything around, and I'm sure I'm going to forget some stuff. But uh, next up, we'll start with some stuff that I have right out here because I just got it or I'm in the process of reviewing it. Uh, this is the a Real Steel Pelican. I just did a review on that. Go back and look at that. A really cool knife. And I think I'm going to hang on to this one for a little bit. I, I'm not guaranteeing it, but I, I do really, really like it. It's uh, I like the look of it. I like the blade. It's uh, very slicey. The action is cool. I think I'm going to hang on to that one for a little bit. Um, next up, here's a, a brand that I don't know if I've even mentioned that I even have this. Keep meaning to do the review. Don't get off my butt to do it. Hey, the, this is a QB. It's the KU074, I do believe. Very inexpensive Chinese D2 flipper, under 30 bucks. Uh, great action. The G10 on it is super impressive. Just the finish on it and everything. Um, again, forward finger choil. It's, again, keeping with the theme. Three and a half inch blade, pretty good size knife. Uh, but I really, really do uh, like this QB a whole lot. It's the only QB I've ever had, So, uh, but I'm impressed by the one that I've had. 
Uh, next up would be the, oh, almost dropped my keyboard off there, trying to move stuff around. Um, we have the American Buffalo Knife and Tool Warthog, uh, the ABKT Warthog. Uh, again, another very inexpensive knife, D2 uh, Chinese Flipper. And again, the same, kind of that same texture of G10. Would not be surprised if these were made in the same place, because uh, that happens over there. Uh, but I like the blade shape, and I like that despite this tiny little blade hole, Man, they nailed it. You can open it, spidey flick it, thumb flick it, all that stuff. It's this tiny little blade hole. But man, it works really, really well. Right hand, left hand carry, all that stuff. Uh, great, I'm not going to say little knife because it is, it is kind of midsize. Uh, again, about three and a half inch blade. But a really, really cool design. Um, next up, I, I'm a YouTuber. I got to have... It's, it's required, I think. I think they'd pull my license if I... Not that they give us licenses. I think they'd shut my channel down. If I didn't have an Ontario Rat Model 1 and a Model 2. And these, of course, are the, the newer D2 versions. Not that new anymore, really, though. But uh, just just great, great knives. Uh, they're uh, they're just awesome. Uh, they're, and they're inexpensive. Just just go buy one. If you are a knife fan at all, just go, you need to experience a rat. It's one of those knives that's just, you have to have. Um, you can get them all over the damn place. And I think, I think at Walmart, they just sell the, uh, Aussie 8 one, but even that, even that version's good. If you don't want to get one somewhere else, get you one there. And they're just so snappy. I mean, listen to that. That's crazy. Just run they're just running on bronze washers, but man, they're, they're awesome. Uh, just really, really good. The, obviously, the Model 1's the bigger one. The Model 2's the smaller one. You can see that with your eyeballs. Uh, next up, let's do uh, some CRKTs. Again, American company, but they have uh, stuff made over yonder. We have the P-Large, or the large p -Lar. Uh, I love Jesper Voxne's designs. Uh, as I always say, he's my hand twin. Everything just fits perfectly when I when I grab a hold of one, um, everything always just feels awesome. And, but I like this larger size better. It gets, it's not that much larger. Uh, and and I, I, I would go with the larger one. This is the uh, D2 one. I wish the blade wasn't coated, but other than that, um, really, really good knife. And uh, next up, the only other CRKT that I have is, uh, I just got it a while ago, but I'm, I really enjoy it. It's just fun to fidget with. This is, I just failed deploying it. This is the uh, TITAC 2 Brian Tai design button lock. They're about 50 bucks. This was one of the last of the $20 closeout ones that uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works did a while ago. Uh, I, I believe the newer ones are 50 bucks and this is like a really dark green instead of the black, but um. I, it's just a fun knife to fidget with. It's a great fidget toy. Again, 8CR steel, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, nice deep carry clip with flush screws, which is kind of cool. Um, love it. Really, really fun. Um, next up, oh, here's one that's not budget that I forgot to uh, I, I forgot to include earlier. Uh, and this is one that I'm, I'm really enjoying having because it's got a slight little story around it. Uh, but this is the... Uh, this is the Best Tech malware designed by Todd Knife and Tool. Um, it's just a long, mean-looking thing. And uh, I love the action. I love the design of it. And also, it used to belong to, to Terrell, uh, Zelric42, here on, on the YouTubes. Uh, he, and he's the designer of it. So it's, it's his old knife. So I, I just think that's, that's cool to have one. It was owned. It's not, it wasn't a prototype. It was a production one. But um, still, it's just... Uh, it's just, I, I, I just love the look of this thing. And I, I carry it a hell of a lot more than I ever thought that I would, even from looking at the pictures. I know I like the look of it in pictures, but it looks much better in person. And it's it's still just, it's just great to carry. It's really, really good. Um, next up, we'll do, I will do a couple of Gerbers. Again, U.S. company, but these are some of the foreign-made ones. They, they don't make everything overseas, but uh, some of them. Uh, this one, I... I don't know why I still have. This is a Gerber flat iron. It might wind up in a giveaway or something. I, I don't think I've carried it once since I did the, the review of it. Neat design, neat idea from them. Um, but uh, it's not the best thing in the world. But but it it's cool, I guess. It looks cool. 
And it was kind of one of the beginning knives of Gerber trying to branch out and do some cool stuff instead of their, their normal normal modus operandi. And you can say, I'll say the same thing about this, about the droop box. Again, it's cool. Um, it, it may wind up in a giveaway or something, but uh, it, it, the scales are gorgeous on this. But I just did a video of this, so don't need to cover that too much at all. You guys can go back and find that pretty easily. Um, and then we're just down to a few now. We're almost done, 25 minutes in. We have two Honey Badgers, the newer D2 version and the original HCR 13. Um, I like the D2 one better. I like the look of it better. It, it's, it's funny though, I'm saying I like the one without the choil better than the one with the choil, but these are both the medium size. Uh, but they, there's just some refinements in the D2 model that I like a little bit better. As you can see, it's right hand, left hand, uh, so that doesn't matter to me much, but it, it's still, it's cool, it's there. I like the, the red backspacer. I like the black. Um, the jimping feels a little bit better. Just some little small things that feel a bit more refined, but uh, the D2's like 55, I think, and the, these are like eh, 25, 30, depending on where you get them from, for the uh, 8CR version, which I, it does not look like they're stopping making the 8CR one. It looks like they're just going to have both side by side, but Honey Badgers are really cool. The action on them is just so crazy. For the price, not so. All right, next up, we have just three more left here, other than the ones that I'm forgetting. Um, we're gonna have the Rake P801. This is also a knife when I first started doing YouTube videos, you were required to have. Um, not so much anymore, it's kind of fallen off the radar, but it's still a great freaking knife, 14C28N. They're super cheap, and uh, I, I did take the blue off the pocket clip. It used to have a blue pocket clip. I didn't care for that. I stripped all the blue off from it. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just a really cool knife. Thumb stud, flipper, great action, stainless steel frame lock. Really, really nice. These are still great. Uh, I know they've kind of fallen off the radar, but, uh, you should go, people should go back and remember that they exist. Uh, next up, the QSP name always escapes me. I really like this knife, and I've done a review of it, but God, every time I pull it out, the name it totally escapes me and leaves my brain of what it is. I know it was like 20 bucks, and for that price, it is awesome. Go check QSP and just look at the pictures. You'll find them. Um, really, really enjoy this. It, for a little budget knife, it's, it's pretty darn good. Very comfortable. I don't even remember what the steel on it is now. 440C. Um pocket clip works well it's not deep carry or anything but it works good i really really love this not enough to remember its name apparently but i, I this is a really good knife and lastly we'll close out with this i'm only going to show one because i have four or five of them and it would be kind of wasting your time dragging them all out we have the k-bar dozer uh these things are awesome and again, budget knives that are just, they're made in Taiwan, and K-Bar is an American company, but they're made in Taiwan, and it, these are just great. Uh, the reason why I only have one here right now is all the rest reside in, like, strategic locations around my house, uh, like in junk drawers and stuff like that, and in EDC kits and whatnot. They are, every time I build out, like, an EDC kit or an emergency kit for a car or whatever, I almost always just get another one of these and throw it in there. So, uh awesome well very simple lock back designs again i believe these are also 440c uh just really really cool all right we're gonna wrap it up here i tried to keep it under half an hour and i made it so i hope you guys have enjoyed this oh i'm sorry we have one more i can't let it go without saying at the end because he's gonna get mad at me if i don't this is a garbage knife do not buy one of these but it is it is made in china and uh, I know Keith would be very upset if I didn't show it. This was a gift from a viewer. The Dalika from uh, the, the Dollar Store. Dollar Tree, I think it is actually, where you can get it. In the, the Tree of Dollars. But uh, don't buy one of these. Buy one of those other ones, the other bunch I just showed you. Don't, don't buy one of these. I know it's only a dollar. Don't buy it. It's terrible. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.